Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're solving the daily lead code problem 440 kth smallest in lexicographical order. Given two integers n and k, return the kth lexicographically smallest integer in the range from 1 to n. And we're given an example here of n equals 13 and k equals 2. So let's work through it and see how they got uh, this answer that it's 10. So what are the numbers between 1 and 13? So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 13, right? But we don't want the second smallest number. We want the second smallest in lexicographical order. Um, and it's a bit strange to think of numbers in lexicographical order because typically this is with uh, characters. But we can just think of it as kind of 1. If you think of 1 as a, then, you know, anything that starts with an one should come before anything that starts with a two, which you can consider as B. So that means that in the lexicographical order here, we can think of it as one, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, blah, 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 right? So in this case, this is kind of our lexicographical string, and then we want the second one, uh, which is this 10, which is how they get this solution. Now, the naive way to do this would be simply to just generate all of the numbers between 1 and n, uh, and then just take the kth one, right? Uh, and you just have to sort them lexicographically, um, and there you go. But unfortunately, for very large n, uh, this doesn't really work uh, because it's just too expensive, and we need to find a better way. So the way that we're going to do this is actually uh, very interesting. And we're actually going to build a, a bit of a tree here. And how are we going to do this? So obviously, we don't consider zero because we want to work from one to n. So we're going to build a tree that's going to look something like this. So we're going to have the, the kind of root, which is just like a blank. We don't want to consider it. Then we're going to have one, two, three, and then basically all the digits up until nine, right? And then inside of that, so that's at the first level. The next level, we're going to do all of the numbers which have this, the, the parent as a prefix. So the prefix here, what would it be? It would be 10, 11, dot, 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 all the way up to 19. Then obviously, you know, we can do this for all of them. Uh, just to save space, I won't do it for all of them. But for three, maybe we can do uh, 31. Sorry, it's not 31. It's 30. 31 dot 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 all the way up until 39 and we can do this basically for all the numbers on this level now we can take this one step further and you can really go infinitely deep as you want as large as n gets and then we'll get 100 um, 101 102 uh, dot 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 all the way up to 109 and the same thing for this 30 as the prefix we'll get 300 300 is 1 302 dot 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 all the way up to 309. Now, why is this, um, you know, important? Let's think about how many items are in each level, right? So the first level, oh, how much am I gonna have to delete here? Let's see. Okay, so the first level, obviously, we have the digits one to nine. So there's nine here. <laughs> and then beneath that, we have basically all the digits. So 10, 11, dot 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 up until 19. That is an additional 10 digits. So we have 10 digits for each level. So that means on the second level, there's 90. And then on the next level, as we saw, it would basically be 100 up until 109. So again, there's 10 digits here, which means that there's 10 digits and there's 90 of them. So we're gonna have 900. So you can see that every level in the tree you go, you actually will, the number of elements on that row uh, grows by 10 of whatever the previous row had. So this way we can actually use it to determine um, which kind of row we want to look at and where we actually want to process the tree because uh, it will tell us which row we need to look at and then based on how many um, how large the number is we can figure out you know how far to the right we want to process before going into um, one of the trees. So essentially if we knew that our number was uh, 800, then we don't need to go past, um, you know, what it, what would that be? That would be the, the third row. So this row, if we know they would be somewhere in here, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, somewhere in here. So if the third row has 900, it's going to be somewhere uh, in here that we actually find the 800th one. 
And then how we'll evaluate that, we'll have a, a criteria to basically just parse through and figure out um, kind of how many to skip forward based on how many are eaten each one. But basically, depending on the value that we have here, uh, we can kind of just skip forward and find the position. But that's the general intuition. We want to build this tree here where essentially at the first row we have the digits one to nine. Obviously, you don't consider zero because we start from one. And then each subtree will be like everything uh, starting with that digit. And then as we go down, you can basically think of multiplying it um, by one each time. Well, not not quite actually, never mind. Um, but yeah, and that's basically we'll build that tree that will tell us you know where we need to search. And then all we have to do is basically traverse that tree to find uh, the correct position. And because we have a tree and we can actually go through it uh, in an optimized way, uh, we'll actually have a kind of log algorithm, um, which is going to be very nice for us to solve this problem. So let's now go to the code editor and kind of go through the details now that we know the general uh, intuition here and how we want to structure um, the tree that we're going to use to parse for this problem. Okay, we went over the basic intuition of the problem. Now let's code it up and I'll do my best to explain it. This is a hard problem. It is a little bit um, tricky and convoluted to work through it. Luckily, the code isn't that complicated. It's more of just following the logic that's a bit tricky, but hopefully we can uh, walk through it line by line and get you there in the end. So obviously we're looking for the numbers between one and n. So we start at one. So obviously the current number is one and that means that we've, uh, we've just taken one number uh, so that means we need to decrement k um, by one, right? Because we need to basically account for the fact that we've just taken a number by starting at one. Oops. What we want to do now is basically traverse the tree that we talked about until we get to the point uh, where we found the kth um, largest lexicographical number. So basically, while k is greater than zero, what we want to do is we want to figure out the distance between two numbers that are next to each other. So for example, if we have one, which is our current value, and we want to find the distance between it and two in terms of how many kind of steps there are or how many numbers are actually between them. Now, obviously, it's not as simple as saying two minus one, because obviously, we have numbers like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, and, you know, basically anything that has a prefix of one, and then you can go one level in the tree like we saw. So 101, 102, 103, 104, dot, 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 and then on and on and on. So it's not as simple as just saying two minus one. It, it doesn't work that way. We have to, we have to basically um, figure out how deep this tree is, and that's how many elements are under one. And that's the true distance between one and two lexicographically, right? It's depending on how many elements we want to actually build here. Uh, so we need a helper function to do that for us, which we'll define in a second. But basically what we need to do in this helper function is just tell us how many numbers based on the size of our tree are actually going to be between uh, two numbers, right? So we're going to say the steps is going to equal to self dot get steps. And this is going to take n because the number actually depends on how large n is. Uh, and then two numbers, so current and current plus one. Oops, this should be cur. I'll just why did I do double r? I don't know. Okay, so this will give us the steps. Now, what do we want to do? Right, either the steps is going to be less than or equal to k. Uh, in which case, if it's less than or equal to k, that means that there's not enough in this subtree to actually contain the value that we need. So we, we can just move on to the next number. So for example, um, if the number, if you know, K was like 10,000 and the number of elements underneath one was, I don't know, 5,000, then there's no point of actually going into the subtree of one because we know that it's not going to exist in there. There's a maximum of a thousand elements, but we're looking for the, oh, this is hundred thousandth, uh, 10,000. So no point, we can just move on to two now and consider it. So if we have the case where the, the steps is actually less than or equal to K, um, then there's no point of exploring our current subtree. We can just go on to the next one and maybe we'll find it there. So the current number will get incremented by one because uh, we're now moving forward. And then we can decrement K by the number of steps we've just taken because we can think of steps as basically numbers. How many numbers are there between uh, two numbers? if we're thinking lexicographically. Otherwise, if the steps is actually greater than k, then that means that 
the number that we're looking for, this kth largest, is somewhere in the subtree of our current number. Uh, so what we want to do is explore that uh, subtree. So we're going to say the current number, we're actually going to multiply it here by 10. Why do I keep doing double R? Uh, we're going to multiply it by 10. And we're going to move uh, k down by one. So for example, if we had one, and we were asking how many are between one and two, and it actually turns out we need to go into the subtree of one, then we're going to start exploring everything that starts with 10, right? So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then if we need to, we can go into 100, 101, 102, 103, and we can basically repeat this process. So that's what happens um, when steps is actually greater than k. We need to then go into the subtree of whatever our current number is. And then basically this loop will run, will decrement k each time, um, and eventually we will break the loop. And all we need to do at the end is just return cur, which is going to be our result. So the main function, pretty straightforward. Um, what we need to do now is actually define the steps function, which is going to tell us how many steps there are between two numbers, given the like total uh, we have to work with here, right? So let's define that function. Uh, we're going to say def, and we're going to call it get steps self. This is going to take an n. This is going to be prefix one and prefix two, right? And what we need to do here is basically figure out the number of steps. Um, and we can basically do this by simulating a tra uh, traversal through our tree. So obviously, in the beginning, the number of steps is zero. Now, while uh, prefix one is actually less than or equal to n, we need to basically start uh, traversing this tree. So what we want to do is we're going to say that the steps taken is going to be the minimum between what? So the minimum of n plus one and prefix two minus prefix one, right? So for example, if we have the numbers 1000 and 2000, the steps between them is either going to be basically 2000 minus 1000, um, right? Uh, let's see, prefix two. So it's either going to be 2000 minus 1000 if you know we don't want to consider something inside of the, the tree of 1000. Or uh, to prevent us from basically overcounting, it's like n plus one. So for example, if we have the prefixes 1000 and 2000, but n is 10,000, then obviously the subtree of this one will be very, very large. Um, so we don't want to basically consider too much, right? We want to just take the, the smallest possible uh, steps to get there. So it's going to be the minimum of whatever n plus one is. So if it was 10,000, then 10,001, um, and the prefix minus prefix one. So it will give us the, the minimum amount of steps to get there. We don't want to take the, the longest possible uh, way to get there. We want the fastest uh, possible way um, to actually get to that value because we don't want to end up having to accidentally traverse the entire tree. We just want to skip forward if we see that uh, we should do that. So basically that is the number of steps it will take. Um, and this is just to prevent us when prefix two is actually less than um, n plus one. So for example, if we had like 1000 to 2000 and n was actually, um, let's see, 1500, um, then obviously we don't want to just take the difference between these two steps. It's actually going to be 1500 plus one. Um, so 1501 minus 1000 uh, 1000 is it going to equal to so it's going to take 501 steps and we have to do 501 uh, because you have to count both the start and the end uh, traversal. So that's where you get the extra one from. All right, so that's why we do the minimum. So if if the number n is basically between prefix one and two, then it's the difference between, you know, the, the target value minus the, the where we started. Otherwise, if it's not in that range, then we just want to take the, the raw amount of steps between them. Um, and then we basically need to potentially consider whether or not we need to go one level deeper into the tree. So once we've done this, we can basically just say, you know, we can move both prefixes um, one level down the tree. And we do this, of course, by multiplying by 10, uh, as you saw uh, here. 
So prefix two, uh, multiply by 10, and we'll repeat this uh, while prefix one is basically greater than uh, or less than or equal to n. And eventually this while loop will break and we can simply return uh, the steps. So that is basically the, the helper function get steps. A little bit complicated, but you know, just to recap again, I know that some people are like, you should be more concise, but I think this problem is <laughs> quite difficult. So let's just recap it again, right? If we have a case where the numbers are 1000 and 2000, but n is actually 5000, then there's no point of exploring every single one between 1000 and 2000. We know we just want the fastest possible way between those two, which is just the difference between them, right? There's a thousand steps between them, uh, therefore we're good, right? Otherwise, if it's in between, then we need to literally go from 1000 to 1500. Um, so we need to just take the difference between these two. So that is, you know, why we have this logic here with the minimum. Uh, okay, so that should basically be our code. Let's run this, make sure I didn't make any bugs. Looks fine. And if we submit it, cool. We are accepted. Nice, this problem is horrible. All right, time and space complexity for those of you that care. So what is the time complexity of, actually maybe we do the get steps. So for this one, obviously we are, in the worst case, we have to traverse kind of down multiple levels of the tree and the tree expands, or I guess each tree level is basically 10 times longer than the other one, but we're not going through every single item, right? We're just picking certain ones. And at each level, um, as we're trying to reduce kind of the prefix here, uh, we're multiplying by 10. So you can think of this as basically reducing the problem space by 10 every time. So for the get steps function, this one is going to be big O of log n, where it's log base 10 of n, because we're reducing the search space by 10 uh, at each iteration through our loop. Space complexity, we don't use any extra space, we just have some pointer variables. Uh, so that is just big O of one. And for the find kth number, obviously we are doing the same thing here where essentially we have a loop here and we're calling our function here. Uh, but what is the actual runtime complexity? Well, in the worst case, we're gonna have to do the same thing where we traverse one level in the tree, but obviously we don't traverse every single element of the tree. We're just kind of cutting down the search space by 10 every time. So again, this will also run in um, log n time space complexity, there is no space used. We just define these like current and K, uh, so we don't do anything there. So that means that the while loop will run in big O of log N, but then we have this nested uh, loop here, which is also log N. So our total time complexity becomes big O of log N, uh, let's see, log N squared. Uh, because we basically have two nested log n functions and the space complexity, as you can see, uh, since everything is done iteratively, um, it's just big O of one. So hopefully that makes sense. This problem is very, very weird. I think it's one where if you draw the diagram like we did in the beginning, um, it's a little bit easier to understand how the tree looks, how at each level the tree grows by a factor of 10 based on the previous level. Um, the number of elements and then how you need to traverse that. So basically, depending on how large the number you're looking for is uh, basically how big N is the search space that will determine how large the tree is. And once you know how large the tree is, then you know um, basically how many items there are uh, in the tree. And then you can determine how to traverse it based on that. So uh, I will stop blabbing because this video is probably too long. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that made sense. If it did, why not leave a like and a comment? Uh, even if you're flaming me for a terrible explanation, I understand this problem is hard. The, the hards are often quite tricky to explain. Anyway, I'll stop blabbing. Subscribe to the channel for more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.